Hello friends, here in this video we will see a problem on welded joint for some given conditions and for that purpose here we have a question. A plate 75 mm wide and 12.5 mm thick is joined with another plate by a single transverse weld and a double parallel fillet weld as shown in figure, the diagram is given. The maximum tensile and shear stresses are 70 megapascal and 56 megapascal respectively. Find the length of each parallel fillet weld if the joint is subjected to both static and fatigue loading. Now this is the question we have. Whatever is given in this question, I will write that in the form of data first. So let us get started. In this question, we need to first write the data. In data, I'll first mention the type of weld we have here. So the type, it consists of transverse weld and parallel fillet weld so this problem consists of both kind of weld now I'll read it again a plate 75 mm wide the width of the plate is given it is 75 mm so width is equal to 75 mm next and 12.5 mm thick thickness is given that is denoted by s 12.5 mm thick is joined with another plate by single transverse weld here we have single transverse weld and double parallel fillet weld these are called as double parallel fillet weld as shown in figure diagram is given maximum tensile and shear stresses are 70 megapascal and 56 megapascal respectively so tensile stress is denoted by sigma t that is equal to 70 megapascal means 70 newton per mm square and shear stress which is tau is equal to 56 newton per mm square then the question is find the length of each parallel fillet weld. Here we have two parallel fillet weld. We have to calculate the length. The length of one parallel fillet weld would be same as the other. So I will denote that length that is length of parallel fillet weld. I will denote it by L2. That is the question. Next, if the joint is subjected to both starting and fatigue, fatigue loading, two conditions are given. The first one is static loading. Second condition is fatigue loading. So for these data available, we need to calculate the length of parallel fillet weld. So let us try to get the solution for this problem. In the solution, here I draw the diagram again, which is given in the problem. It consists of two plates. which are connected to one another here there are two plates they are connected in such a way that here we have a transverse weld and then we have parallel fillet weld it is called as transverse weld because when the load is acting on the plate 
this load is perpendicular to the weld that is why it is called as transverse fillet weld similarly here even the load is perpendicular to the weld so it is called as transverse fillet weld next we have two parallel fillet welds and as we can see these welds they are parallel to the load that is why they are called as parallel fillet welds so in short this is the complete joint which is the welded joint given in the problem and this welded joint as we know it is a permanent joint next they have even given us the width of the plate that is 75 mm wide now once i have completed this diagram here the approach in this problem would be first i will get the length of transverse fillet weld because if we look into the question they are telling us to find the length of parallel fillet weld so before that we should know the length of transverse fillet weld so here i'll say that let l1 is equal to length of transverse fillet weld now l1 can be calculated since we know the width of the plate is 75 and that will be from this we will get the length of this weld that is 75 minus 12.5 this 12.5 we are subtracting so that we get the length of weld and this value comes out to be it would be 62.5 mm so the first thing i get here is the length of transverse fillet weld now after getting this length the next thing i can calculate is the load which is pulling both the plates because in this problem we don't have the value of this load so we need to find it out so i'll say that now since total load acting on the plates load p will be equal to stress into area now here in this problem we have both the stresses that is tensile and shear stress out of them we have to select the maximum value because while designing the welded joint we should have maximum load so here i'll select sigma t because it has value 70 i'm selecting sigma t multiplied by area so i have utilized the formula of stress is equal to load upon area to get the value of load now i'll say that therefore p is equal to sigma t is 70 area here they have given width and thickness the width of the plate is 75 and its thickness is 12.5 so it is 12.5 or we can say 75 into 12.5 so from this we will get the value of load and my answer is 65.63 into 10 raised to 3 newton this is the value of total load which is carried by these plates now after getting the value of load which is the total load carried by both the plates next here i will calculate how much load is carried by this single transverse weld and then i will calculate the load carried by parallel fillet weld after calculating the individual loads i'll add them and equate with this total load so that whatever the unknown is there we can get the value of that so let us get started here i'll say that 
let P1 is equal to load carried by single transverse fillet weld. Now how to get the value of load for that here I'll explain how to get that area. Here I am explaining a diagram for transverse fillet weld. Now here in this diagram we have two plates. One is the upper plate and the other is the plate at the bottom. Now these two plates are connected by the joint. This is the transverse fillet weld and here we are applying load at the upper plate and at the bottom most plate. So what happens here? In this case, if I draw a perpendicular here, I'll name this triangle as A, B, C. So in triangle A, B, C, I am drawing a perpendicular to this hypotenuse A, C. Next, here I'll say that the thickness of both the plates they are S, this thickness is S and even the thickness for the bottom plate that is also S. Now I need to know the area where this welding or this transverse fillet weld will fail. See failure starts from minimum area so we should know that in a weld which is the minimum area now the perpendicular which i have drawn from point b i let it name as bm so this bm is called as the throat thickness and this will give us the minimum area so if i project this down So this will be the failing area of the weld and here I have thickness T which is called as the throat thickness and this is the length of weld. Since for transverse fillet weld we are taking the length as L1. So here I will say that since minimum thickness is equal to throat thickness so therefore i'll say that let small t be the throat thickness Now this BM indicates the throat thickness that is T and here this angle this would be 45 degree. So if I take this triangle out that is if I am enlarging it here this is the triangle A. MB this angle is 45 degree here AB is equal to S BM is equal to T so here I'll use the formula of sine that is sine theta sine 45 degree is opposite by hypotenuse opposite is T hypotenuse is S 
so therefore here i get the value of t that is sin 45 that will give me 0 0.707 into s so this is the value of throat thickness now once i know the value of throat thickness this will give us the minimum area because at throat we are having the smallest thickness so therefore minimum area will be at throat and that minimum area is capital A is equal to thickness multiplied by length of weld which is L1. So if I simplify this I will get area and therefore the minimum area becomes 0.707 S into L1. Now this is the minimum area or we can say failing area for transverse fillet weld. Now similarly as I have explained for transverse fillet weld the throat thickness T will be same for parallel fillet weld with the only change being that here the weld they are parallel and we are having two such areas in case of single transverse fillet weld area was only one in case of double parallel fillet weld we would be getting two areas so I'll write down therefore minimum area for double parallel fillet weld this minimum area will be a is equal to it will be twice into the value that is it would be 2t multiplied by l2 because l2 is the length of parallel fillet weld So therefore capital A becomes T is 0 0.707 into S into L2. So therefore minimum area will be 1.414 S into L2. Now this area which I have got this is the area for double parallel fillet weld next after getting area for both transverse fillet weld and double parallel fillet weld the next thing which I will calculate here is the load carried by transverse fillet weld and parallel fillet weld so here I will say that after this therefore load carried by single transverse fillet weld that load which is carried I will denote it by P1 and it will be area of single transverse fillet weld multiplied by tensile stress so here as we can see in case of single transverse fillet weld it is subjected to tension so here I am taking tensile stress and therefore P1 will be equal to area and that area is 0.707 S multiplied by L1 into sigma T because area we have calculated first. Now after getting this I will say that therefore P1 will be equal to 0.707 value of S that is the thickness of plate 
it is given in the question as 12.5 l1 is 62.5 and sigma t that is 70 so from this i am able to get the value of p1 my answer is 38.66 into 10 raised to 3 newton now after getting this load it is the load carried by single transverse fillet weld similarly load carried by double parallel fillet weld that I will denote it by P2 and it will be area into from the diagram it is clear that when the load is applied parallel fillet weld will shear off so it is subjected to shear stress so here I have into tau now area we have calculated I will put the value therefore P2 is equal to area is 1.414 into 414s into l2 multiplied by tau next year p2 will be 1.414 into s is 12.5 l2 is the value which we have to calculate it is unknown tau is 56 so here i'll get the answer in the form of l2 and that is it is 990 L2 unit will be Newton and previously also we have calculated P1 next I will say that hence total load on weld or plates that will be p is equal to i'll equate it as p1 plus p2 so therefore this p we had calculated earlier its answer was 65.63 into 10 raised to 3 newton that was p is equal to p1 the value is 38.66 into 10 raised to 3 plus P2 is 990 into L2 so therefore here L2 will be equal to 65.63 into 10 raised to 3 minus this term 38.66 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 990 so from this I will get the answer of L2 and the value which I have therefore L2 is equal to 27.2 mm so the length of parallel fillet weld should be 27.2 mm now in this we will be adding some more value for the allowance for starting and stopping of weld that is we need to weld only up to 27.2 mm but we will give some allowance for the starting of weld and stopping of weld so i'll say that therefore adding 12.5 mm for start and stop of weld so therefore L2 will be 27.2 plus 12.5 and therefore it is 39.7 mm or we can round it off to 40 mm so this will be L2 so here 
as we see in this problem they were telling us to get the length of parallel fillet weld and the length of parallel fillet weld the conditions were given in the problem as both for static and fatigue loading now the value which we have got it is for static loading next we will calculate for fatigue loading so this value is for static loading next after calculating up to static loading i'll say that considering fatigue loading now when we are considering fatigue loading here in fatigue loading i'll say that stress concentration factor we have to write down the stress concentration factor for both transverse fillet weld and for parallel fillet weld and the value is stress concentration factor for transverse fillet weld it is 1.5 next for parallel fillet weld stress concentration factor is 2.7 so this approach we have to use for fatigue loading that is to get the stress concentration factor once we know the stress concentration factor we will get the new values of stresses so i'll say that therefore tensile stress for fatigue loading this tensile stress i'll denote it by sigma t1 and that will be sigma t which is given upon the stress concentration factor for transverse fillet weld subjected to fatigue and that is 1.5 so this will be 70 divided by 1.5 and therefore i'll get my answer of sigma t1 which comes out to be 46.7 newton per mm square now after getting tensile stress for fatigue loading here i'll get similarly shear stress for fatigue loading shear stress i'll denote it by tau 1 and that will be tau upon stress concentration factor which is 2.7 it is 56 divided by 2.7 so stress value is 20.74 newton per millimeter square now for designing the transverse fillet weld and parallel fillet weld we would be using these values of stresses so that is the importance of fatigue or we can say stress concentration factor now i'll say that therefore load on transverse fillet weld because of fatigue loading fatigue loading is like repetitive loading the value of intensities of load will go on changing and it would be repetitive now therefore this load i'll denote it by p1 is equal to again here i will be having area multiplied by tensile stress but this will be sigma t1 considering fatigue the value which we have got so therefore this will be area is 0.707 s multiplied by l1 into sigma t1 so therefore p1 becomes 0.707 into 12.5 multiplied by l1 62.5 into sigma t1 
new value is 46.7 so from this we will get p1 and my answer is 25.80 into 10 raised to 3 newton next similarly load on parallel fillet weld because of fatigue loading your load will be p2 is equal to area multiplied by new value of shear stress which is considering fatigue so therefore p2 will be equal to area which is 1.414 into s multiplied by l2 multiplied by tau 1 so therefore p2 is 1.414 into s is 12.5 l2 is the value which we have to calculate and tau 1 that was 20.74 so here I will get P2 in the form of L2 and my answer is 366 L2 this will be in terms of Newton next hence total load carried by welds or plates that total load will be P is equal to P1 plus P2 so therefore P the value was 65.63 into 10 raised to 3 is equal to P1 25. 80 into 10 raised to 3 plus P2 366 L2 so from this we can calculate L2 it will be 65.63 into 10 raised to 3 minus this term which is 25.80 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 366 so from this I will get the answer of L2 and therefore L2 comes out to be 108.8 mm next again I will say that therefore considering for stopping or we can say starting and stopping of weld when we consider the starting and stopping of weld therefore L2 in this we have to add 12.5 mm and my final answer will be 121.3 mm my second answer so we have to leave 12.5 mm that is provide an extra length for weld that is for starting and stopping we are considering some extra length and here we have calculated L2 which is 121.3 mm and previously when it was for static loading the value of L2 for parallel fillet weld it was 40 mm and now this is for fatigue loading the length of parallel fillet weld is 121.3 mm so in this video we have seen how to design a welded joint